Bob and Sherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. Earn 3% cash back on online shopping. Here's Bob and Sherry. Welcome to the Bob and Sherry Show. They don't get no better, Dick. But they sure as hell get funnier. And now, broadcasting from the palatial Bob and Sherry studios, it's Bob and Sherry. Well, I guess I shouldn't open us up like this, but, you know, I... I have sometimes impulse control issues, and I just have to get this out. The other day, after we finished, we were recording some promos for our stations, and I said, could we wait for a minute? I want to go get uh, something to eat. And as, as I walked out of the door into the hallway, and the door is slowly closing, I hear, I hear you say to, to Todd, it's not even 12 o'clock. Oh it's my not God. even 12 You're o'clock and he's going to be so eating the again. The eating with the eating, the eating, the eating, the eating. Oh, yeah? That, you know what I was going to get? I was going to... I got it right here. So I had another one. Um, the In It Cherry Cashew Bar with Dark Chocolate. It's about the size of my finger. But I the, just wanted a little something the, and I'm being criticized way, for that. It's the way you carry on. Oh, my God. I've got to get something to eat. It's not even noon. I breastfed babies that didn't have to eat this much. Okay? I do not carry I'm serious. on. I nursed two youngins yes, you do. that were like, were like, yeah, I'm three days old, but I'm chill for another minute. You carry on. You carry on. Why did you have to bring breastfeeding into this conversation? Where are the time? What is it to you if I want to go get a delicious in it cherry dark chocolate you, cashew bar? It is nothing to me if you want to bring a bag of snacks and tie it behind your ears like a horse and eat all day long. Where it drives me crazy is you throw up your hands in exasperation like we've denied no, I you don't. food and no, water I don't. for days. No, that is not true. Yes, I just take care of business. Yes, you did. And Todd will back me up. Oh, my God. God, let me just I'm you know, dying something. You know what she said? Eat. You know what she said? Uh, why don't you find another way to get your protein? You want me to pass out <laughs> on the floor? Let me tell you, Missy, you go I'm, do all this oh, stuff by yourself. Oh, the martyrdom. St. Bob of you the Onion like Granola you Bar. Won't, you eat you won't before like it. you eat as eat, soon as you eat, get eat. here while you're getting ready to go on the air. Then a few, about a half an hour after that, you go down the hall into your office and then you eat again. And then you take another break for a little while, probably about an eat, hour after eat. that, and you eat. And then you come back late in the show and you've already hit the vending machine and you've got crackers and you're eating again. <laughs> stop, and you don't, I, stop Stop following me. You, stop <laughs> noticing me. Well, it's not that I follow you. It's the fact that you announce it. You don't want to face the truth. The truth that I go eat a little bit of a delicious dark chocolate cherry and cashew bar? Am I, am I fat? The truth that you am have I, a tapeworm. Fat? Oh, jeez. Yeah, you, have, you do have a tapeworm. And then I, it, you, you were, and you become you completely start decompensating like you come unglued. Have you seen the tape? Unglued. Board? If have, we if you're denied food for more th- for like twenty minutes. Have you seen the tape board uh, worm scene with Amy Schumer and Goldie Hawn in that movie that was out? It didn't do very I well. Yeah, I didn't see that. Movie. Oh my god, it's hysterical. It I is. It's hysterical. Movie. Anyway, um, just you know, if I like eating, you I are like free eating. to eat. Everybody likes to eat. We all have to eat. We're not cyborgs. You're making these, all... si- these 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 uh, behind my back comments to him as I go out the door. No. You think the door? No, it's, this it's is the... this door does not close fast. We all have to eat. It's the way you carry on and announce it. Don't like carry it's on. not enough Even, to just look. say. It's not enough to just say, "Hey guys, give me a minute. I'm going to go get a granola bar." It's this, right? I'm going to stand up because the only way to do him is to stand yeah, up like him it. now. Ready? Right? Here's what he does. Here's what he does. What? <sighs> I gotta eat. If I'm gonna work, I gotta eat. Slams out the door. Like like I had said. You to him, are making me sound like Seinfeld's father. Like, That's <laughs> like, like I had said to him when he pulled into the parking lot today, looky here, Chief. 
<laughs> this ain't a restaurant. <laughs> I ain't asking for you, you to provide any. You ain't getting no food. I ain't, I ain't asking for you to provide. I bring my own food. I bring Just my own it. food. What do you have to announce it for? What do you have to make such a production about Dave, it and our, act like we're punishing you? Our founding fathers didn't make this much racket when they were putting the country together and putting the Declaration of Independence together. You, it is a proclamation. Will, will you at least admit that you act like we are punishing you because your blood sugar is dropping, that you take it out on us like we are forcing you into some sort of heinous labor and denying you food. Will you at least admit to that? Because <clears throat> <laughs> he knows it's true because I know his body language. I know him like I know him better than I know myself. Like when I look in the mirror, it's his face looking back at me. I know him so well. The two and I of you need to th- stop language. looking at me. This one is bad enough. Stop, stop <laughs> studying me and writing down stuff about me and let me eat my food. You know, he, eat your food without blaming us for the fact that you, you have to me, work for a living. You make me feel like a dog. Like like an absolute, you know, a dog will just eat until it's sick. <laughs> That's how you make me feel. I'm going, folks. I have to tell you the insult that I felt, <laughs> the the harshness, the coldness on on my back as the door had not totally closed. And I hear, oh, he's eating again. It's not even noon. That hurt, <laughs> that hurt my feelings. You know, here's the thing: if we were ever stranded, <laughs> if we were stranded in a, like a he'll life eat, raft, he'll eat us it, first. And the, and the boat went down, and we had like a survival kit. Yeah, n- neither one of us could fall asleep because this one over here would eat all the food. You know what? He's going to eat one of us, and he's going to eat me first. And here's why: my diet is cleaner than yours, that's and true. he's going to be picky about you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> damn right it is. <laughs> I know. And as, I, as I'm eating your succulent arm, I say, how do you like this now, Sherry? I'm really enjoying myself now. It's not even noon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not even your elbow. <laughs> it's Bob and Sherry. Ways to get in touch with the Bob and Sherry show. Stick your head out a window and yell, hey, Bob and Sherry. Hey, Bob and Sherry. Get the Bob and Sherry free app for your phone and leave us a talk back message. Hey, Bob and Sherry. Email us through the Bob and Sherry website, bobandsherry.com. Com or email us hello at bobandsherry.com. Call or text us at 1 888 Bob Sherry. Hello, Bob and Sherry. Leave us a DM on the Bob and Sherry Facebook page, or you can just kick it old school and yell out the window. Hey, Bob and Sherry! Congratulations, Sherry Lynch, named one of the most influential women in radio again this year. It's Bob and Sherry. I've not seen this woman's face in 10 months. Uh, face to face um and so it's just harder because the the body language is is not there you can't throw up a hand and say you know i want the mic just me with the mic right now or or you take it or you know max giving us a sign or anything it's just it's just weird and once in a while you know we we feel the bit is over and we go to a queue which you know there's several queues but usually it's uh, it's bob and sherry and, and people know that, uh, you know, we're, we're going to break for a moment. And sometimes we talk on top of each other. So I have a new rule. I have a no, new no, rule. We're, I don't want one of your new rules now. Mm-mm. Nope, we're not going to have a new rule. Nope, no you new don't, rules. You don't no know what rules. the rule is. No new rules. What is the new rule that we're not having? Just for the sake of argument, what, are, what is this new rule? Why are you against have? my bringing uh, to the table a possible rule? <sighs> Because your rules, when you bring them to the table, um, either they just don't make any sense or we only do them twice and then forget them. And like, so why even take it on? You think that I bring rules that don't make any sense? Yes. (laughs) Yes, I believe that's how I stated it for the record. (laughs) This is like the old days when you would have a family meeting. (laughs) Oh, God, oh, yeah. those days. Have a, that never have, worked out. Hang on a second. Let me give him a little something to go to Wendy's with later. There you go. There's your, your new rule. Oh, the old family <laughs> meeting. Old family God, meeting. that what a what a what a failure that was. What a the waste family of time. meeting. Yeah. A waste um, of time. What is this new rule you'd like to have, though? So <laughs> that you don't step on me when I'm about to say, and this is Bob and Sherry, right? Whoever was driving the bit, right? 
whoever said this is something that I want to talk about, and uh, and you know, you say, okay, okay. Evidently, you've thought about this. You probably don't say that to yourself because you probably think I don't give much thought to anything because I bring in rules that make no sense. But um, whoever is driving it does the this is Bob and Sherry at the end. See, that works on paper, but here's why it doesn't work in reality. Here's why it doesn't work in reality. One, um, eyeballs watching clocky clock because that's an important part of that. And then sometimes there's something that we need to do before we toss to the break. And sometimes that thing gets forgotten. So that rule does not make a lot of sense because we're going to have some problems then with Mr. Clocky Clock and things that we were supposed to do and did not. I, I, I very seldom have a problem with Mr. Clocky Clock. But you frequently, you have to admit that you, and I'll give you another tip if you're honest, that you frequently <laughs> forget other things that we were supposed to do, like mm-hmm. um, important things that we were supposed to cover that we did not cover. Are you, are you, you taking money that? out of my tip? Are you taking money out of my tip to- drawer there? Um, I'm waiting jar. for you to, uh, no, I just moved your jar and I'm fishing around in my pocket to see if I have any change to give you another tip if you're willing to admit that you forget to do the things you were supposed to do. Occasionally, no man is perfect. Ding, ding. Um, here's a rule we could have. We could turn our phone ringers off. There's a rule that we could have. This yeah. show does not run on rules. <laughs> this show gonna, has never yeah. done well with oh, rules. I don't, I don't need you to tell me that. Oh, you don't need. This is not a surprise for Bobby. We mm. don't do well with rules. The minute someone tells us yeah. we have a rule, our entire body mobilizes to find ways to break it. Why would we want to set ourselves up for failure like that? Well, it could work some of the time, don't you think? Yeah, Look, but if I'm know, talking pretty about much everything f- we do works some wanna- of the time. <laughs> if I'm talking about one of my, you know, fascinating interests... Like the career of John Fogarty, you know, I'm driving the thing. I just got an idea. I'm going to, I'm going to do a Latin translation of, we do it sometimes and have that be our new company motto. Bob and Sherry, we do it sometimes. <laughs> You're listening to the best of Bob and Sherry. Absolutely. Bob and Sherry. You idiots. Here they are. He's a moron. He's acting like a complete idiot. Morons in the news. You know, I think some people see a movie and they say, you know, that's the way I should act. I'm going to college, so I'm going to act like Bluto in uh, in college. It usually doesn't go well. And here's an example for you. 19-year-old Nicholas Jones got pulled over for a broken taillight last month in St. Augustine, Florida. Then, while the cop was walking up to his car, cop is out of the car, Nicholas sees him in the rearview mirror, hits the gas, and takes off. Like he's in a movie. But luckily, Nicholas decided to place a call to 911 about an hour later to brag about what he did. He identified himself as the guy who ran from the cop, and he was amazed they haven't found him yet. He said he'd driven past four other cop cars and none of them pulled him over, adding, quote, What do we pay you guys for? He's now taunting the popos. He also said the original officer must have gotten the license plate number, but it turned out that wasn't true. The cop didn't have the time to get it before Nicholas sped off. But thanks to the 911 call, they were able to track him down using his phone number. And they arrested him the next day inside a Ross clothing store. That must have been embarrassing. When they told him how they tracked him down, he thought it was funny. And that essentially, he turned himself in. He's facing reckless driving, fleeing a law enforcement officer, and misuse of 911 and... They found a bunch of drugs in his car. I'm going to float this as a possibility, okay? I think it's possible that Nicholas is not actually smart enough to go to college. Yeah, that could be it. I mean, if you don't know that 911 can be traced. College is not for everybody. And I think it's possible that Nicholas doesn't really need to You may be right, but he thought he was in a movie. Today's moron of the day is 34-year-old Kristen Zatzmary of where else... Vero Beach, Florida, a Florida woman. Officers got a 911 call about a disturbance at a home, and when they got there, they found Kristen sitting in a taxi outside the home. Um, She acknowledged to the police that she had been in a verbal disagreement with her mother, and as she was talking with the sheriff's deputy, 
He noticed that there was some white powder caked on her right nostril, which is all the law needs to ask you to step out of the vehicle. Uh When she stepped out of the vehicle, a clear bag filled with a white substance dropped out of her booty shorts. And Kristen immediately said, that's not mine. I'm keeping it for a friend. (laughs) Now, here's... Here's what I'm not. Imagine this gets somebody who doesn't ever grow up. Here's what I'm not really giving you all the details about where she was keeping the bag and what she was using to keep the bag safely stored there. I've read this and uh, it's exactly what you think. It's what you think. think, The bag was Molly, um, MDMA. Good golly, Miss Molly. And now Kristen is booked into the county jail. Mm -hmm. It's not mine. I'm holding it for a friend. Heads up to all my friends. If I ask you to hold something for me, not there. Could you put it in your handbag. <laughs> yeah, put it, please. That's right. Or your pocket, or even your glove compartment. Please don't. <laughs> please don't say, "Oh, here are those earrings you left at my house," and pull them out of there. Text the word "moron" <laughs> to eight 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 two six two seven four three seven, and we will send this one right to your phone honest honest to goodness that was the best that she could come up with i'm holding it for a friend holding it for a friend sometimes we just do we refuse to grow up this is the sort of excuse you're not allowed to use after when like 19 uh for oh 19 because no, people take long time to grow up now 19 at the She's at the most Bob. at She's the 34. most it's Bob and Sherry. Get the moron of the day sent right to your phone. Text moron to 888-BOB-SHARE-262-7437. One of my kids texted me a link to a BuzzFeed article. She was like, mother, for your show, you're welcome. Which I, you know, I appreciate. I appreciate that they're trying to pitch in. With all of our children put together, this is the first effort they've made for material. Outside of the stuff that we've stolen because of their stupidity. Mother... Use this for your show. You're welcome. <laughs> and it was what a is it? it was a um, a link to an article from people posting different ways that their parents met that make yeah. you believe in fate. Oh. So I'm just going to share a couple of these because I thought these were like give you like the little goosebumps. Okay. Um, one person posted: My parents met when my mom won tickets to a Metallica concert, <laughs> along with a limo ride to and from the arena. My from dad a, from a radio station. Yep. My dad was the limo driver. Is that right? She would never, uh, yeah. I never met him any other yeah. way, How about right? that? Um, my parents had arranged to meet their respective dates at the exact same time and location, but they were both stood up and they've been married for 37 years. Say that again. They. She was meeting a date and he was meeting a date. They yeah. didn't know each other. They didn't know Total each strangers other. strangers uh-huh. at the same spot. Right. She got stood up. He got stood up. They started and, talking. They've been married 37 years. How about that? Isn't that perfect? You know, they could have been both stood up, but never said anything to each other. And it makes and you... it never would have happened. Makes you wonder. I know. I know. Um, my Here's another one. My dad was a cop. My mom worked at a donut shop. Boom. <laughs> that's funny. Um, this is a really cute you one. You know, that's almost hard to believe. Uh, but, but... Yeah, I do. This is a really cute one. My dad's identical twin came to my mom's job to visit her coworker who he was dating. And after he left, my mom asked jokingly, hey, he doesn't have a twin, does he? No kidding. And he did. He and did? they're married today. How about that? Yeah. That's great. Um, my mom met my stepdad when they bumped into each other while out walking their dogs. She was on her usual route, but he had never taken that path before. And for some strange reason that day... His dog pulled him in that direction, you and know, there she was. You know, I think walking your dog is the number one way to meet people. Didn't we have something on that last week that if, if you want to uh, engage with strangers, or get a you, dog. Want to, you want to meet new people this year, get a dog, because people are more likely to speak to you if you're walking a dog. You have there, there's There's a place where you can begin conversation. Oh, your dog is so cute or whatever. I'm really careful who I talk to when I'm walking my dog. Really? I'll talk to a couple mm-hmm. or a group. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to another woman and I'll definitely talk to old people, but not a clown with a gun in his hand, but like, you know, Pennywise yeah, right. or John yeah. Wayne Gacy. Yeah. In fact, if I'm walking my dog mm-hmm. and there's a man coming up the trail, right. and he doesn't even have a dog. Mm-hmm. I just holster up my pepper spray. Well, you don't have to have to walk in the park. You don't have to have a dog. No. So you think that every guy who's walking alone is a serial is killer. a serial killer. Okay. 
You must. Ha- you have a lot of stress in your life. No, I don't have any stress because I'm not getting caught by surprise by serial killers. Okay. Like if I came upon you, like mm-hmm. you don't look, you look harmless, but it's the harmless ones you got to watch out for. I look harmless. It's like not a good thing. Is you it? know, I don't think I it know. is. I heard that and on the face of it, it sounds good, but you don't want to look harmless. Um, I'd like to have a little bit of uh, menace about I will me. pepper spray you so fast if you look menacing. No, you don't want to be menacing. I don't look menacing at all. Why you want to be but, menacing? Well, well, I don't know. It's just like, the you know. So, uh, welcome to Secret Agent School. Oh, this one over here with the khakis and that pink no, shirt. No, that would we make you... We can't no, use you. That makes you an awesome secret agent because you can go undercover. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And infiltrate golf clubs everywhere. I mean, who wants, if I'm looking for somebody to go undercover as a secret agent, do I really want someone that actually looks scary or yeah, creepy? Yeah. You want, no, you I want, want somebody that looks uh, benign and is five feet seven. Friendly. Yeah. I'm five, five feet seven and three quarters. Yeah. How many times have I told you those extra three quarters make all the difference? Ask the woman who knows. There it is. You don't want to look menacing. No. You don't want to look like a Although, danger. I, you know, I don't look menacing. I, I'm out walking my dog with a goofy looking hat, shorts, and, uh, blue sneakers, and a t-shirt. And I can see in the eyes of some women who are out there walking that they don't even like the idea that I'm on the same trail. If I passed you... And I try to be so, oh, good morning, ladies, or whatever, you know. If I passed you, um, I would assess you. And think like, all right, he's probably okay. Mm-hmm. But think about it, like you it know, ma- how- it makes as a man, it does make you feel badly that uh, you are being assessed that way. Well, but imagine, but I understand. Imagine how it feels to be a woman and have to walk through the world making those assessments everywhere you go, every single day. I got a little taste of what you go through as a woman about a week ago. It's funny you should bring this up. I'm out there with the dog in the woods. There's a trail in the woods. And I mean, there is nothing around us. It's nothing but woods in the middle of the week. And a very tall, rough-looking dude comes walking toward us. And I have to tell you, I thought to myself, this is a little bit on the scary side. And did you And the you guy find had yourself... a mean-looking face. He was fine. He said, hi, how are you, as he walked by. But did you immediately find yourself scanning? Are there other people? I did. Is there a place yeah. I can go? Yeah. Now multiply that by a million and do it every day from the age of no, 11. I, I, listen, I'm agreeing with you. I get, yeah. I get that whole but thing. But I would not. I'm glad you don't look menacing. You mm. look friendly and kind. Yeah. You know, that's why you haven't been maced. And that's something to feel good about. It's a low bar, yeah, but you say. cleared it, mister. Yeah, right. You Just cleared barely. it. It's Bob and Sherry. <laughs> Haven't you found adulthood to just be really a crushing disappointment? Like, why is adulthood so exhausting and confusing? And why is it that in the middle of all that confusing and exhausting stuff, you can't even eat? what you love, right? Remember when you were a kid and you get up in the morning and you pour a great big bowl of crunchy, sweet, yummy, delicious cereal, and you'd watch a few cartoons and then you'd try to decide what you were going to do all day to have fun. Let's bring some of that back. And you can do it with Magic Spoon. If you've been trying to cut down on carbs and sugar, if you're starting every day with a protein shake that tastes just, let's be honest, kind of weird and like space food, it's time for you to grab a box of Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is cereal that gives you all of the things you love about cereal with none of the bad stuff. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Magic Spoon is only 140 calories a serving, and it's keto-friendly and gluten-free and grain-free and soy-free, low-carb and GMO-free. And with Magic Spoon, you can build your own box or grab a variety pack and the flavors to choose from yum cocoa fruity frosted peanut butter blueberry cinnamon it's healthy it's delicious it's everything you love about cereal but it gives you all of the things you want as a grown-up so basically magic spoon is your way of tricking adulthood into behaving like something that's fun and joyful go to magicspoon.com slash sherry right now grab your yummy cereal and you can try it today and use our promo code sherry at checkout to save five dollars off your order and listen up magic spoon is so confident that you're going to love it i mean 
It's got magic in the name. They back it up with a 100% happiness guarantee. If it's not your thing for whatever reason, absolutely return it. Get a refund. No questions asked. Your next delicious bowl of crunchy, yummy, guilt-free cereal is waiting for you at magicspoon.com slash Sherry. Just remember, use that code Sherry at checkout and save $5 off. And thank you so much, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring the Bob and Sherry podcast. Bob and Sherry sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit. Credit card earn three percent cash back on online shopping here's bob and sherry it is time now for everyone needs a laugh and today's comedian is a guy that we all just are crazy about we've had him on the show a bunch of times he's so funny sebastian maniscalco another woman had a dog at the airport dressed up what's this <laughs> what's with the dogs i got a dog it's my dog why don't we do dog things? Go to the park, you can give it a frisbee. You know? Once in a while, I'll lean down. Hey, how you doing? You all right? Good? All right, get the hell out of here. It's the dog. I'm not dressing it up. What's up? Why's the dog got socks on? <laughs> socks, had a sweater, a little hat, a little cell phone around his neck. Stop trying to humanize the animal. It's a dog. Let it be a dog. In Los Angeles this past year, they had, for Christmas time, a Santa Claus for your dog. 150 dogs wrapped around the mall to see doggy Santa. Two kids to see the normal Santa. 150 dogs. And you got the idiot owner sitting there in line. Yeah, Cooper. Yeah, you're going to see Sienna today. (laughs) (laughs) And they put the dog on Sienna's lap. And from the line, they're like, go ahead, Cooper. Go ahead. Tell Sienna what you want. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm looking at this I'm like he just wants to lick his <laughs> but he can't because he's got a sweater on <laughs> <laughs> But it's good, you know? We do all this stuff during the day and we come to nighttime. We start coming to events like this, start bringing our lady, dating. It's fun, right? First date, that's the big one. We normally do, guys, dinner, sushi. Yeah, last week, first date. I don't know what sushi costs, I don't know how much it is, right? Chicken salad steak, I know what that goes for. A dynamite roll? I have no idea what the hell that is. <laughs> because what we're doing, ladies, on the date is we're trying to figure out how much the bill is in our head before it comes to the table. It's a little game we play up here, right? You don't know what's happening. So I'm guesstimating this is about a $120 meal the bill comes, right? And like a silence comes over the table, right? <laughs> so the bill comes, I do the quick peek. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do on the first date. We don't look at it like it's a life insurance policy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we act like it didn't even come to the table. So I saw the total, $256. <laughs> I closed it, and then I started sweating. (laughs) On the inside of my body. Because on the first date, you can't let on that that total might bother you. That's right. You have to take that poker face. But if you're married, and you get a bill like that, (laughs) 
<laughs> You'll flip it over. Could you believe this crap? <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred and fit. What the hell did you eat? <laughs> you better take a good look at this place. We're not coming back here again. <laughs> That's so true. Kevin still talks about a bill we got for sushi one night when we went out to dinner a few years ago. Sebastian, Maniscalco, it's Bob and Sherry. Ways to get in touch with the Bob and Sherry show. Stick your head out a window and yell, hey, Bob and Sherry. Hey, Bob and Sherry. Get the Bob and Sherry free app for your phone and leave us a talk back message. Hey, Bob and Sherry. Email us through the Bob and Sherry website, bobandsherry.com, or email us hello at bobandsherry.com. Call or or text us at 1-888-BOB-SHERRY. Hello, Bob and Sherry. Leave us a DM on the Bob and Sherry Facebook page. Or you can just kick it old school and yell out the window. Hey, Bob and Sherry! Get the moron of the day sent right to your phone. Text moron to 888-BOB-SHERRY. 262-7437. You asked me last week what superpower I would choose. Yes. Um, and I, I really wanted... You thought you might want to be invisible... And I want it to fly, but I take it back. I've given it some thought. Mm-hmm. I want the superpower of being able to read a dog's mind. And here's why. My mailbox, my house is on like a little hill and the driveway goes up to it. The mailbox is at the bottom of the driveway. And generally, whichever one of us comes home at that time, will stop and get the mail. So the other day I stopped to get the mail and I got out of my car and left my door open checked the mailbox and then some trash had blown down my neighbors are doing something to their house and some trash had blown down and so i decided i would pick the trash up off right. the street right so i've got the mail in one hand and i pick the um the bud light can up and the piece of paper and i'm walking back to my car and i look and a stray dog or someone's dog that i've never seen before has gotten in my car through the open door and is sitting there waiting for me to come back. Oh, no kidding. So that we can go for bye-byes. Oh, that's so cute. What kind of a dog was it? It was a big it? dog, like a big mixed breed sort yeah. of a, a dog, no collar. And it was just sitting there looking at and you? And you know how dogs have that happy face they make? Yeah, yeah, where yeah. Where they're like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. So I, I walk over to the car and I was like, whoa, who are you now? And the dog looks at me like... Where are we going? Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm up for it. Have you ever seen the dog before in the neighborhood? No, I'll be damned. Nope. And so, so what did you do? You're in a tough situation now because do you let the dog run around the neighborhood? Do you take well, it inside? I have three dogs and four cats. Yeah. Well, two. I have two dogs now and four cats. We lost one of our dogs last week. Um, I can't really bring a big, strange dog that's no. riding shotgun in my minivan right. up into the house. Right, right. And I assume I live, you know my neighborhood. I don't. I live deep in the neighborhood. There's no busy roads or anything. This is right. somebody's dog. Yeah. And it was way too friendly to not be somebody's dog. Mm-hmm. I just, so I, I talked to the dog for a minute and then I said, come on, come on, come on. And he didn't want to. He did not want to get out of the van. He likes going for rides. He likes going for rides. Yeah. But I finally kind of got him out and, and I'm looking and there's no collar or anything. And I pet him, I petted him on the head. And then he looked over like he heard something I couldn't hear and went trotting. And just went down the road. And just disappeared. Do you know that what you just described was commonplace in our grandparents' day? Just dogs roaming? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, you don't have to go back that far. Mary used to tell me about the dog that they had. I forget the dog's name. But it was it was like a golden, but a little bit of a mix. The dog lived under the porch of their house. That's where... He lived. And then, you know, he'd come up on the porch. And I don't know if he was allowed inside the house, but he went under the porch a lot. And every day at exactly the same time when the school bus down the street would drop Mary and her brother off, the dog about five minutes early would be down there sitting on the corner. Just waiting. waiting. The dog knew the time, regardless of the year. I mean, it's not like he's reading where the sun is because that's going to change. He just... Knew, knew instinctively exactly when they were going to get off that bus. Well, I would love to be able to have read that dog's mind. Yeah. Because here's the dog and he's looking at me with a big smile on his face. And the dog's like, I've never met you before. Yeah. Your van's kind of filthy. <laughs> but let's go somewhere. Where are we going? Yeah, right. And he was disappointed oh. that I made him get out. 
So now I'm, I'm sure looking, he made it home. He's a smart dog. Yeah. Now I'm looking for him. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like when I see him again, he must belong to one of my neighbors. Yeah. He and I are going to be like, yo, yeah, yeah. What's up? How, how you been? The Off Air Podcast, the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. Oddcast. Download on the free Bob and Sherry app, website, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Bob and Sherry. Good morning, hey, Jim. You? Welcome to oh, the very show. Very well. How are you? We're doing good. Thanks very much. Jim, I'm so uh, personally happy for your success with Big Bang Theory. The Thank show, you. The show is so good. It's taken it a little, a little bit of a while to find its audience. Yeah. But it's there, and you just got an Emmy nomination, and you must be loving life right about now. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, uh, yes, I am. I don't, I don't even know what to say to that, but it's true. It's very, it's happy times. Well, I want to sell people who haven't watched Big Bang Theory okay. yet on the show and on your character, Sheldon. So give us your best like capsule um, explanation of what Big Bang Theory is. Um, at its core, it's really about four beautiful mind genius type guys and um, really kind of watching these extraordinary people just get through some ordinary things the thing a lot of things that we take for granted like are easy for us like talking to people and <laughs> getting through the day um and a lot of these uh, normal situations are really um represented by uh, quite literally the girl next door uh, penny uh, played by kaylee cuoco and um and she's beautiful and one of them does have a, a romantic interest in her in fact where we are right now they're actually having a little fling uh which i don't think will last but that's just my opinion um and really, that's what it's about at its heart is these, like I say, these extraordinary human beings, brain-wise, um, dealing with a lot of things that are somewhat easier for us. And Lewis Black is going to be a guest tonight, huh? Speaking of an extraordinary mind, yes, indeed he is. He, we've yeah. had him on the show. He is so darn funny. Oh, my God. I said I, he was just as funny as you would expect him to be. The energy he brings, he, it's one big, juicy scene that he's in that, that he just tears up. Well, and, well uh, talk, talk about that, Jim. I mean, when you bring somebody like that who's, uh-huh. who's good at ad-libbing and, and is very right. comfortable with monologues and all, and he's, and he's playing a part in an, with an ensemble cast that, who are together all the time, um, does he go off script or what, what goes on? You know, he didn't. I mean, well, he did sometimes, but only when he was making a mistake, at which point he would curse himself out mercilessly, <laughs> which one of, the, one of the funniest things I've ever watched on that set. Um, but no, he did his darndest to stick exactly to the script. Uh, they Really, the scene that, 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 that they um, constructed with him in mind, he drives really hard, which you would expect. I mean, that kind of energy just kind of takes control anyway. So mm-hmm. it, it was good that they, they measured it out that way. But no, he stuck to it and, and did his job just like anybody else. Who would, it was amazing. And he was such a good guy, too. Such a pleasure to work with. Yeah, we like him, too. All right, so you're up for the enemy, the Emmy. And <laughs> no, now it's the enemy. I the, I, well, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm asking. You read my mind. What, what is it like? You know those cameras are on you. You've got a good chance of winning, and then somebody horrible. else's name is called. They still have the camera on you. It's horrible. What, what do you do? It's not horrible because you're disappointed. It's not horrible because you're in any way. Because there's no, that whole expression of it's an honor to be nominated, it's mm-hmm. so true. Because mm-hmm. there's nothing to be done after that. It's just a pleasure to be there in the company of everybody. But mm-hmm. the camera in your face mm-hmm. and the fear mm-hmm. of... You know, because I kept saying to somebody after, it's like, I felt frozen and fake smiling. But it's not because my other choice was some sort of scowl. I wasn't going <laughs> to spit in the pathway of Alec Baldwin. Mm-hmm. It's just that you feel so, you just don't dare move your mouth because you don't want to accidentally look like you're conveying this life other thing than just happiness. Yeah, who was it that, that scowled when somebody wanted some amusement? Didn't well, Faith Hill do Faith Hill, yeah. that's, yes, yes. I thought that was his now, she right. was kidding, right? I, I mean, well, she was, but that's what you're thinking probably in the back of yeah. your mind, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, not for a second. <laughs> you know, if I'm lucky enough to get nominated again and I still don't win, then perhaps I'll start thinking that way. But no, for now, no, I was happy to be there. No, but what you're thinking about is if, if there's anything but sheer bliss on my face, yeah. some jackass is going to put on it on talk it, soup. Yeah, it's on over talk soup. And yeah. over again. That was my biggest. I, act, I of course, recorded the ceremony on at home because you want to mm-hmm. see what it's like to watch that. And even as it was happening, I was thinking exactly that. I go, I can't wait to go home and make sure that <laughs> I didn't do it. And I had my phone on, and I literally was afraid it was going to start buzzing with people calling me going, what the hell is that look on your face, you know? 
but it didn't. I got a lot of texts during the show, though, like, I see uh, you, um, yeah. I like your talks, whatever, but yeah, yeah. nothing about my face. So how does your how does your life change with the Emmy nomination? Because, you know, in today's television universe, yeah. there's so many more choices. It can take a show a long time right. to get the traction and build the audience, but the Emmy nomination makes you, like... A big Golden. player, a yeah. bold-faced player, instantly. So how did your life change with that moment? Well, it, I, in some ways, not at all. Like, I don't feel any, nothing happened, except that I got busier doing, answering questions about the Emmy suddenly, you know. It, mm-hmm. it, and, and the other thing that I'm still seeing happen is any new visibility it's brought to the show, mm-hmm. um, which is certainly right now the biggest thing that I could ask for from this is it'll help us, you know, get more viewers, stay on the air, keep the job, you know, Mm -hmm. bring it down to the basis terms. Um, But as far as an actual change, nothing, nothing seemed that different. I didn't get any free cars. I didn't get... You didn't get... Did you get like a gift basket filled with useless swag and facial treatments? Nothing? No. In fact, it's all fairly new to me, as you can imagine, but apparently... there was there was like a what's called like a gifting lounge or whatever you can go through afterwards and and I didn't go through it. Um, Jim, I, Jim, Jim, how many chances do you get to walk through the gifting lounge and get free phones and watches? What were you thinking? I know, I know. I was thinking. I don't know what I was. I didn't want to go. Now, believe me, my sister and my mother have given me endless <laughs> grief okay. for the fact that I didn't get things to send them, but. I don't know. I just didn't feel you like... Made, listen, you, you made did... the right choice. This is not a time where anybody needs to Thank see your you. name identified with going to the gifting lounge when people are out of well, work. and two... You. Do you see what a decent human being I am? Yes, I'm celebrating and, it. And two, you know, everything in the gifting lounge is pay for play. And sure enough, somebody would get a hold of and star of the Big Bang Project helped himself to ancient provocateur thongs. And you would get <laughs> so... That's right, that that's right. Head, I think. You would get <laughs> so busted. Don't you pay taxes? on them now too oh yeah. yeah you have to yeah yeah not and, to get penny pincher on you but come on yeah. but since, <laughs> since no money or freebies here. came with the emmy award yeah we're looking out for you well the show taxes on a pile of makeup that i'm going to send my sister Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this show is called the big bang theory the star is our guest jim life. parsons an emmy nominee see that gives you all, that gives the whole show it is serious crap a little clout to carry around there you go jim. emmy nominated jim parsons thank you so Thanks, much jim <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Welcome to the Bob and Cherry Store. You can stock up for summer with deals down every aisle. With Bob and Cherry swag you can use, including a really big 24-ounce Bob and Cherry latte mug, plus Bob and Cherry travel mugs and H2O Go bottles, plus our brand new Mother of All Mothers line with oversized teas, candles, enormous tote bags, and more. Just hit shop at bobandcherry.com. Get the free Bob and Sherry app and instantly get the podcast, the oddcast, and Bob and Sherry fun size. So a woman in England posted an insane complaint list that her brother-in-law posted online concerning his last visit to her house, to the house of her husband okay. and she. And there were like 24 complaints that, were, that he had about he their had, home? About their home and why uh, he was uh, uncomfortable to a certain degree. And I went through it at first and I thought, could this be true? And then I thought for a moment and I said, yes, because people think they can say any damn thing at all on the Internet. And I, I've experienced it myself. We have a friend and uh, we invited him to our annual party, Christmas party that you come to and the guys come to. And uh, he brought his uh, boyfriend along with him. And evidently, we had installed an improperly sized toilet seat in the guest bathroom. And that was my fault. I I went to uh, Home Depot and I bought the wrong size toilet seat. It was a couple of inches too too, uh, short. I've since fixed that. And no, you can't get your money back. He took a picture of it. And said and posted it on his Facebook page and said, um, some people just are are just not handy, I guess. L O L at a party. Well, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing that's ever been said or uh, you know attributed to me. But was that really necessary? 
So if he's posting, and you know, he's eating my food and drinking my liquor and taking pictures of my toilet and boys. Mm-hmm. So here's the complaint list that this brother-in-law did about his recent visit. Their front gate was too squeaky. The towels they gave me were white. I don't like white towels. They gave me a choice of three blankets, and frankly, none of them were all that good. The gates on the stairs were, to keep their kids safe, were annoying, really inconvenient. They had a bunch of spare clothes in my size, but I thought the selection was horrible. (laughs) Amazon Prime Video did not have the new Quentin Tarantino movie yet. It's kind of a waste of money, don't you think? Someone used the bathroom in the middle of the night, and I heard the toilet flush. The woman was using her asthma inhaler much too much. Um, uh, this that's, guy, that's what's keeping her alive. This guy. Are there more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The planes overhead were flying too low. The house had too many rugs. You know, some of this, the homeowners can't control they they don't have a direct line to the FAA no. about the flight pattern no. off the airport. And if they complained, then the FAA security would come and arrest them. They didn't have enough music on vinyl. The local swimming pool they belonged to was not open late enough. I could hear traffic in the distance when I was in their backyard. Every time. I borrowed their car. I had to move the seat because they did not reset it for me. And finally, the dogs they have would not cuddle. I know why. (laughs) I know why, Bubba. The the biggest thing about this is this guy's attitude of entitlement. It's unbelievable. It's like he just wrote a bad Yelp review for his sister's house. That's exactly right. His sister-in-law. And, and, you know, the thing is, he was there for days. Days He was probably days. unbearable. I know. <laughs> You're listening to the best of Bob and Sherry. Absolutely. Bob and Sherry sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. Earn 3% cash back on online shopping. Here's Bob and Sherry. Welcome to this portion of the show, which we are calling the world of Double M. Double M, as you know, is our co-worker. Um, he's had an interesting evolution here. We, When we first got him into the building, we fried him in the sun for about, was that about eight months? Uh, it's still there, so yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. we moved you to another office and gave you blinds. I got blinds, yeah, right after I left. Welcome back to the show, Double M. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Now, his name is Tim, all right, but we use it with... Two M's. Yes, Tim with two M's. For some reason. So what's going on in your life? I tell you, I tell you, well, you know, I'm just getting back and uh, it was good to spend some time with my daughter, my, and my wife. And, um, and your daughter's a teenager now, right? She's 17 years old. It is, uh, it sounds really cliche, but it really is fascinating how quick they, uh, they grow up. It is. So my, they're they're living in one town and you're living in another right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've, recently moved yeah so yeah. i get home i i don't i don't get to see them that much and uh it's always a pleasure to, to get home and to go see them so my wife is out shopping and uh, my daughter said well i don't want to go in there dad what do you say we just go get some lunch right and um i don't want to go through all my uh my medication and and uh um uh, i don't know how many listeners we have right now bob what both of them right now are listening so uh, we have uh, <laughs> right. so so here comes all my hipaa uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, coming right, out. Right. so I have OCD, and it's very apparent to just about everybody, and mm-hmm. I was diagnosed with ADD. And um, I think I got that at a young age when my mother used to clean for the cleaning lady to come, <laughs> and she would get so erratic with it. We, we had this uh, Oriental Asian type of rug that had like the, what do you call them, the tassels? Yeah, whatever, yeah. Them, right. And she used to comb them and then actually take a scissors just and to make sure. And trim them. And she would trim them. Oh, so, my gosh. That's amazing because they don't grow. <laughs> no, they <you> know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after a while. There's nothing yeah. left. You're, you're cutting yeah. into the symbols. <laughs> yeah, so I, I grew up uh, smelling like flax soap you know, as, <laughs> as, 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 as a kid. So... Um, so my daughter and I, we, we go out, we have lunch and I ordered a chicken salad and, and, and I take medication for the OCD 
And my daughter said, dad, you're doing it again. And I didn't know what I was doing. I, I said, what, what am I doing? And I took my salad and I noticed that I have to put everything in thirds. So the chicken, I had a, the salad was crazy. That's what a salad is. Oh, it so was like all, all like mixed up together. It was a chicken Caesar salad. So I had, a, I had to separate the chicken from the lettuce and the croutons. And then I eat it in order. And I never noticed that I do that. It, God, it must take kind of, forever to go to lunch with you. It's bizarre. Making it, a note and, to myself. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it's, I know it's not normal. And, and you know, the so, fir- so question, wait, so you, you'll eat a bite of chicken and then you'll chew that and swallow it. Then you eat a bite of lettuce, chew it, swallow it. Then you eat a crouton. No, I go through the chicken first, all of it. I he, he marches and, around the plate. Yeah, and I actually count the chicken too, which is how weird it is. So, you know, because they come in six strips you know, so mm-hmm. I, I make sure there's six there. Mm-hmm. I don't count the croutons for some reason or the lettuce, but you know, but but your I mother's to disappointed to hear yeah. that. I'm just saying it's it, it's like those people that uh, they'll order a sub sandwich and they'll have to rip off the ham or the meat that's hanging over the edge because it's not perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's really really bizarre. So when you eat so. in order, you don't do it in, in level of gratification. It's not like. You're saving whatever it is the best for last. You how do just, you, yeah? How do you determine the order that you eat things in? Uh, right to left. It's just it's weird, <laughs> you know. It's just. I like how know, he answered that. Like, duh. It's this, just this to me is not that weird. I mean, I don't have this this issue, but it, if that is what makes you comfortable, I say. Yeah, you're not hurting anybody. Yeah, you're not hurting anybody by doing that. What's What's the matter with that? No, it's, Except he has a 17 year old daughter. The o- <laughs> yeah, the OCD that. thing. Um, I'm glad you have OCD because you've taken an office that used to look like crap, and now it's got like a nice little rug, and it's it's always in order. Spotless. I have with to mood walk lighting. by it. It looks beautiful. Yeah. And it, this it, is good. Now it's filled with people all day long. <laughs> you know, that's so, an issue. Is yeah. that bothersome to you? Because the yeah. germs. No, like, does your do you yeah. have does your germ do you have a germ thing? I, I am a germ phob. Yeah. Oh, you're in the right room then. I'm, so I'm, are we. I'm definitely a germ phob. I I can't um, uh, French fries. You know, I'll eat my French fries with a fork. So it's uh, um, it's. And I don't know if you know anybody that does that, but it's um, it's, it's. You don't really like to awkward. touch your food with your hands. How about pizza? You eat that with a fork? I can't do it. No, I. Uh, oh no 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 no. Yes, I eat pizza with a fork. Um and and uh, but I have to hold it by the crust. The crust to me is a handle. Gotcha. You know, so it's... it's Okay, how about this? You go into a restaurant, the pizza restaurant, all right? It's a nice pizza restaurant. And they have the silverware wrapped in a... um, Paper napkin. No, a regular napkin. Oh, a cloth cloth napkin. napkin. Fancy. Okay. Will you unwrap the napkin, take the silverware, and on the table, place the silverware? Nope. It goes right on the napkin. And then I order a second napkin my to go on my lap. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It, it, Why? It, because there are germs on that table. There's germs on the table. Yes. I totally, th- this guy, he's perfect. He's so sensible. Yeah, that's exactly right. Why would anybody be kicking his butt over these things? This makes be- sense. Because he has a 17-year-old daughter. She oh, would yeah, kick his butt true. if he could walk on water. It's Bob and Sherry. Welcome to the Bob and Sherry store. You can stock up for summer with deals down every aisle. With Bob and Sherry swag you can use, including a really big 24-ounce Bob and Sherry latte mug, plus Bob and Sherry travel mugs and H2O Go bottles, plus our brand new Mother of All Mothers line with oversized teas, candles, enormous tote bags, and more. Just hit shop at bobandsherry.com. Oh, wait a mile for Use the Talk Back feature feature. on the free Bob and Sherry app and leave us a message. I'm so happy to be in the the world of Tim because I agree with so many things that he does. Listening to these two (laughs) sharing their mutual disgust over what's the dirtiest thing in the restaurant, the menu. I get too much information on this show. It just comes over the wire, right? So I'm reading the dirtiest thing in a restaurant is the menu. Because you've got some guy, and he's wiping his nose, and then he's looking at, well, do I want the uh, the, the shrimp uh, parmesan? What do I want here? And then he puts it away. Then the next person, they've got God knows what kind of a disease. And it's and amazing. And then I'm picking it up. And when you read the like research, it's amazing how long cold and flu germs stay alive exactly. on hard surfaces. Then you got the salt and pepper, all right? 
Oh. Yeah. You got the salt and pepper. And then you take the silverware, you put it on the table. It's disgusting because the guy who has the disease, his hand was just there. So uh. how, how do you go out to, I don't know how the two of you go out to eat at all. Uh, there's uh, some... we, put, we put the utensils on the, uh, on the napkin. It goes, right? it goes on the napkin. I mean, if you held some of that stuff on a, under a blue light, right. it would be appalling. Yeah. I mean, I just. <laughs> I know it. There's a restaurant in the building that, that, uh, um, that I live in. I, I'd rather lick a dumpster than. <laughs> go to that place <laughs> bob these this is your people this is my man right here, right here. but you know what we're right i'm we're, not arguing don't, with you. don't point the finger at us so you're you have a job that must require an awful lot of shaking of hands i won't do it i can't how I, do you get I, around I, how, do you, how do you do that with an, like a client i fist bump honestly it's weird but it breaks the ice i'm not i i, I can't shake a hand it's just who knows where that hand was? That's exactly right. I, I don't. It's it's again. It's the OCD. I saw a therapist on this, mm-hmm. and and I brought my wife because she wants to know how to how how, how to deal inter- with it. Yeah, yeah how right. to deal with it. And um, the the therapist sat back. He goes, "This is weird." No. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Such a- and he was dead serious. Oh. And I'm thinking, that's your diagnosis? He's a weirdo? <laughs> you know? <so. laughs> no. Just like, oh, that hurt your feelings. It, it really did. It yeah. really, I mean, just, it, that stood with, I mean, I, I, he said, of course, um, so are we going to meet again? You know, I'm like. He called me a weirdo. Yeah, I'm thinking. No, yeah. I'm going to find somebody else. Yeah, so here comes the nurse to check me out. You know, can yeah. you check this weirdo out? You know, so. <laughs> I know, I know. So um, <laughs> it must have been tricky when you were dating your wife because there's a whole lot of, um, you know. You're getting used to each other. Yeah. Getting yeah. used to each other. You know, she, she didn't. An exchanging of like, you know, kisses and touch and that sort of thing. We didn't have a problem with that. You well, know, that's but, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah so right, right, right. No, that's one yeah. of the places. Are you where, saying he's not all man? Come on. <laughs> that's one of the places where Bob's also not too germ. Yeah, I don't that's have a problem with that at yeah. all. Big A frame like mine. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the thing is? Uh, it's it's saying you, you're you're dating someone and you're the person that's asking for a second napkin every time. See, women are going to pick up on little things like that. I do. The guy like needs a, two napkins. I like a clean man with good manners, though. Right. I do. Now, the thing, Tim, is your daughter, um, they all they all reach a stage. Some of them get there a little earlier than others. They all reach a stage where they've known you their whole lives yeah. and have lived with you for their entire lives. But then one day they look at you and and that's the moment they decide everything about you is weird and awkward and embarrassing. And it sounds like lunch with your daughter and you counting your chicken was that moment where she was like, oh, my God, Dad. Yeah, but, you know, they say that your daughters are prone to marry people like their fathers. Did you mention that? <laughs> no, I didn't bring that up at that time. A little awkward time, but no, no, I, um, uh, she's doing, now I'm noticing that she does what I do. She'll mm-hmm. rip the ham off mm-hmm. the sub just to make sure it's perfect. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking, did I, you know, did I do that to you? Mm-hmm. So It might just be a habit. Cause you know, they pick up our habits. She may not have OCD. She may just think this is how we eat a ham sandwich. It is. She'll open a door with her arm. Her well, that's arm. just that's just I a sign of how smart her she is. More I can't touch more. that door. I don't either. We don't touch doors. I, what do you? I, I how use do you my flush shirt. a toilet? I use my shirt. My foot. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, double M. I am so glad you came out. I feel so much better about myself. Double first M. Of all. You are among your people here. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I hope everybody listening starts changing their lifestyle. OCD. You're going to be a the OCD lifestyle is going to keep you happier and healthier and healthier and healthier especially boy that's a psa you didn't expect to do today walk with pride my friend (laughs) (laughs) it's the world of double m this is the bob and sherry show you read it once i don't believe that and then you read it again i can't believe this it's bob and sherry's i believe this and i believe this we thought we would focus on the secret nicknames that your um, significant other does not realize that he or she has. Well, we had a call on it last week. That's where the, the woman came from. The woman, the kids, 
and all of the friends refer to her husband as Captain Crazy. Yeah. The captain has no idea. Well, they call him the captain too, which I think is even more mocking. More insulting. It yeah. is, don't you think? Like you have lots of nicknames, but you know what they are. Like, oh yeah, she calls me doo doo head right to my face. And ding dong. Yeah, ding dong. Mm-hmm. And then you've got all your names in a here. loving way. In a loving way. The first uh, couple of times uh, I was referred to as doo doo head. Um, um, no, it's 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 loving. Very, very loving. Just sometimes, uh, you know, we have our our ups and downs in life and our little quirks in our personality. And he is Captain. And her friends will text, oh, I hope you're not bringing the captain to the game tonight. Yeah. Because of his various, very picky. And the and, and she, she talks to the kids and says, uh-oh, here comes Captain Crazy. And they nod. The uh, growing up, all the women in my family, all their husbands, all the uncles, everybody had a name they didn't know about. Like what? Code names. Well, some of them I can't really say. Uh huh. Um, my father, was... my father's was the king. But did but, he know but, that he was? the king? Yeah, he knew he was the king. Yeah, and his his friends. But even as a kid, I could I could tell my friends were mocking him by calling him. Oh, the king is here, and well, I I knew there was some mocking going on. Well, like my Uncle Joe, um, his name was Pickle Jar, but he didn't know that his name was Pickle Jar. Mm -hmm. And just in case you're, I can't even, I could tell you how he got the nickname Pickle Jar, but Mm -hmm. your reaction would be so over the charts. It would be so unbearable that I don't even know that I want to go there to tell you how Uncle Joe got the name Pickle Jar. How bad could it be? It's pretty bad. Uncle Joe was a drinker. He was a heavy drinker. I know where you're going. I, I, he was I, a heavy, heavy. No, please don't do this. He was a heavy drinker. I'm asking drinker. you for the sake of the show sure, and my own tell sanity. Me, please tell me. Tell him when we're please off the me. air. I know what he was doing. You don't. It's yeah, worse do. than that. It couldn't be worse it's than worse that. It's worse than that. Get it's out worse of here. Than, it's, he got the name Pickle Jar, and it is so much worse than anything you're imagining. Oh. That if I told you, you'll you'll just be beside you yourself. Can't you euphemism it up? I can, but he'll still. All right, I'm going to try. But be prepared, okay? I get to okay? stop it at, at any point. Um, he was a drinker. And when he wasn't drinking, he was a sweet guy and didn't have much to say. But when he was drinking, he was lampshade on his head. Uh-huh. And he was constantly going on and on and on about how his wife didn't believe anything that he told her. And he, he, was, he would get liquored up after work. He went to work every day, but he would come home and he would sit out in his garage. He had like a little man cave out in the garage and mm-hmm. he would drink. And he was complaining that he was having certain issues with his digestive system. And she wouldn't believe him. Well, can I tell you, it wasn't that she didn't want to believe him. It's just that she didn't want to have to know about it, talk about it, or think about it. Her feeling was, can you not just keep that between you, God, and the Tidy Bowl man? Because I don't want to know. I'm getting close here. And he (laughs) was insistent that that she believe him. and no. And so no. he produced. Wow, enough. It was That's like a courtroom. It. He That's had to it. produce. He produced evidence. Exhibit A. That's it. In a Vlasic pickle jar. God, oh, jeez. Got really, he was really liquored up, but good. And he came down the stairs with it in the Vlasic pickle jar and said, Stop. Patsy, I told you something was wrong with me. If she didn't want to hear it, why did you bring it to the rest of us? That's the wife. What? She didn't want to know about it. I don't want. Why should I want to know about it? Well, there were other oh, people Lord, there. What kind of a man does that? There were other people there. Oh, you have got to be kidding! Sitting around the kitchen table, I come from very social people. This is like Borat. And um, afterward, he was known henceforth as, yeah, as Pickle Jar. As Pickle Jar, he'd have to be. Um, and I asked my grandma Black Hair. I heard these stories growing up, right? And when I finally got old enough to realize like what really went on, mm-hmm. I said to my grandma, black hair, and she, I said, well, you saw it. Do you think there was something wrong with him? <laughs> Always the one who's concerned. <laughs> Always concerned about others. I love that about you, dear. <laughs> and my grandma, black I don't want to know. Don't tell me. I this. need to know, Cheryl. No, you have please. to tell me. No, you'll regret it. At this it. point, you You're have gonna to. You're going to regret it. You we have will, to. Will. Come on, you have to. My grandma oh, black hair said, it. oh, please, it didn't look any different from oh, anything. Heinz leaves in the yard. <laughs> Stop it. That was the schnauzer. Stop it. I'm glad you're not 
glad Stop you, it. Jerry, I am so glad you said uh, that it was the dog. I'm so, you know, that actually, another, that's true. Another I'm layer relieved. to this story. I'm relieved about that, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've all been there. Oh, well, you know yes. I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, th- hey, thanks for raising it back up t- to a socially acceptable w- way of relating a story. <laughs> Oh. Can you understand why I try so hard to raise my own children differently oh, than, yeah. than this? Yeah. So that's how Uncle Joe got the name Pickle Jar. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> All right, folks, beat that. <laughs> beat that. We got a salami roll or something for you. I will never eat a pickle again the rest of my life. You're listening to the best of Bob and Sherry. Absolutely. Get Lamar's review sent right to your phone. Text MOVIE to 888-BOB-SHARE. Um, this just uh, came across for Max, um, who we were just chatting with about how he's too big for any woman to put him in a suitcase to try to get rid of him. Um, it's from Trevor, and Trevor says, So, my girlfriend Katie and I are listening to your latest podcast, and she asks me, Who's Max? What does he do? Does he like Google things for Bob and Sherry? Ha 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 ha. Um, if only well, I could see how it would be if, if, if he's not a really regular listener. Well, he, no, Trevor might... is his girlfriend. Katie was wondering. Oh, if... Katie was wondering. I wish that we had the kind of prosperity to where we could hire someone whose only job was to Google things for us. No, he runs all of the technical part of the show in addition to uh, being a personality and, and, uh, you know, keeps us uh, on time and that sort of thing. Why, yeah. Why don't you describe what you do, Max? When you're not Googling things for us. Because that's not fair for people to, to not sure know how good well, you are. Well, just as Bob just said, I just have to make sure that the show runs on time. Any of the musical sound effects, uh, any of that stuff, that's the stuff that I play. So that's kind of what I do. Like everything All technical. of the timing of the program yeah. he does. And he does it all on the fly. I mean, and- we're, we're talking we're talking about a subject and like maybe the subject has to do with some old television show, right? While while we're talking, he is looking for the music from that show, and it just magically appears. So, and people yeah. think that this is all, like we're reading in a script or something like that. Technically, he's Googling things. Right. Or like when Bob does one of his really great jokes, like how the senior citizens on The Bachelor are going to the farmer's market. There it is. There's Max right there. Yeah. So that's just part of what he does. And then, you know, he does research on musical special things that we do. And he does a lot. I make up lists. <laughs> yeah. And he does all sorts of like promos and commercials. And he's an actor, too, when he's not here. And he's done television and plays and all sorts of things. And he played a cow once. He was Beefy the Cowman. That's my proudest moment. Thank you. Beefy what was, what the was, Cow. My brother, cow my man. older brother made a jingle for him. Beefy the Cowman. The cowgirls love cow below and man above. I was always uncomfortable with your brother's little song, and I don't think I was alone. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be. Well, he never complained. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? When you're beefy, the cow man. I mean, if you had to pick which part of the cow to be. Oh, right? yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. All right. So we figured, <laughs> we figured that out. <laughs> we And we've... Uh, we, Put up my mediocre career in acting. So, mystery solved. <laughs> Mostly failing career in acting. No, I mean you've been in a lot of good plays, and you've 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 done national commercials and everything. What was your biggest commercial of all time? I was the Sears termite guy nationally for seven years. I also See did that? A commercial mm-hmm. for Ford. See that? Enco yeah. windshield wipers. Yeah. It's too bad you never got a gig like uh, what's her name with Progressive Flow. Flow. Progressive. Well, if he that had, is what a the, career! That if, is. if Beefy the Cowman had taken off, he wouldn't be here with us. He'd be too big and too good. You know, for you're us. right. You're exactly right. Yeah. There's somebody else in here. But in Flow's defense, she's really talented. She is. She can so sing. She can do a lot of things. It's just it's a it's a matter of time. Sometimes it's just pure luck. You know, the right person, right place. And the world was wasn't ready for Beefy the Cowman. Right. It was ready for Flo. And who's Flo's little Jamie? Uh, Jamie, yeah. 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 I have to say, um, I got to give Progressive snaps. That Progressive on Ice commercial they do. It's great. It's all of their spots are yeah. great.
A shareable taste of the show. The Fun Size Podcast drops every Thursday on the free Bob and Sherry app. Oh, now I feel about this. Um, a team at Oakland University in Michigan found that there are 30 things the couples fight about. 30? That's a lot. Oh, yeah. give me a break. Oh, uh, there are six categories. Oh, God, this is too... Who would get married? No one after no I go one. through this. Good the six Lord. categories are affection, sex, money, control, jealousy, and housework. Those are the six categories. Sounds right. So these are... Let's go through the 30 topics and um, let me know when I land on one that is either a raging problem for you or like not a problem at all. Okay. Okay. Number 30. One, you... <laughs> What? One person spends all of the other person's money. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> at all. It's not an issue now. It's fine. It's not. It's not an issue at all now. And I'm not saying it used to be an issue. I'm just saying hypothetically, but maybe it, if it, it was, used to it be wouldn't an bother issue. me. <laughs> it's not no, an issue now. Um, it's not an issue in our relationship. My husband likes to tell me. One for y'all. I could live on seventy-five cents in in a cardboard <laughs> box with my dog. <laughs> and I'm like, is that a fact? You know, he is would, that a fact? You could live on seventy-five cents a year in a cardboard box with your dog. I'll, I'll tell you what, his lifestyle would be as bare as uh, anybody that I would know. It, he could. He, he could live in one at a one room cabin with the dog. He could do it pretty minimally, but it's going to be a little more than 75 cents. A little more, yeah. All right, number 29. (laughs) Um, Fighting over who should pay for what. I don't have a problem with that. We, everything, we just pay for everything together, so. We split it up. I pay for certain things, she pays for certain things, you know, it just kind of works out. Um, We were, Kevin and I were actually talking about this, and, um, because of something else, and, and I said, I just, I like the way we do it. We just both pay for everything. He said, yeah, we pay for everything, and I pay for everything with my sanity, and here we are. <laughs> it's working. Yeah. You know, I think he's happier <laughs> since he's lost his mind. Um, <laughs> number 28, <laughs> children. Yeah. Yep, this is one of our conflict points, for sure. Just in the decisions you make and how to uh, deal with a problem, well, or, he would have done it differently? Yeah, he. I would have. Okay, so the other, the other day, um, Karamia comes home from school, and she's like, Mom, remember yesterday when I told you that I had a meeting with my advisor about my classes? I think I'm going to drop Spanish next year. And I said, we never had that conversation. And she said, sure, we did. We, we talked about it in the car yesterday. And I'm like, no, we didn't care, Mia. Here's what we talked about in the car yesterday. What Ian said to you when you got off the bus, um, uh, how prom falls on the same weekend as Britney's graduation and a dance competition, and whether or not I would let you have a hoochie prom dress. Those were the things we talked about in the car yesterday. Right. And she goes, no, we talked about this meeting. Okay, two things. One, you know my memory. Yeah, like an elephant. Two, I'm not going to forget a conversation in which you tell me that you're going to do something that I don't approve of, Mm -hmm. which is drop a class, right? Mm -hmm. So I said to her, Karamia, no one in this house needs to ever challenge my memory on anything. Mm -hmm. And my husband says... Well, now, wait a minute, because sometimes you only remember what you want to remember. Keep out. Keep out. I know. Danger. So she trundles out of the room and goes to her bedroom, closes the door, and I whipped around and said, my love, for future reference, when I'm ripping her a bloody new one, do not helpfully chime in with how you disagree about my memory. Do you see how that's bad? And he goes... Oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah. yeah, you have to. You always have to back them up. Because I said you're the same man that's like you're so soft and weak. I'm over here. I'm eating her like a great white shark on a bucket of chum, and you jump in. Yeah, yeah, that really is difficult. And by the way, he's wrong. My memories, like as you know, you, yeah. between you and my wife, I mean, she's got a memory like an elephant too. I'll tell you what you were wearing the last time you she'll tell me she'll tell me what i was what i ordered the, the first time on a date i oh, mean it's yeah. unbelievable oh yeah uh let's see future plans that's number 27 the things we argue about future plans number 26 goals in life that's one god you want to try to get as compatible there as you possibly can because <laughs> that's going to be miserable um, I've I've had difficulty with that one not not with Mary but in the past in the with past. a relationship yeah. or two uh, 
the goals. And that's a big one. If you're a young person, you're thinking of asking for somebody's hand. Make sure you got the same goals. You well, know, there's nothing there's nothing fun or sexy about it. Just the word goals tires people out. But, but you better be on the same path. You learn that lesson by being with someone who checked a lot of the other boxes. Yeah. And you didn't bother to investigate that yeah. one. All right, number 25, couples fight about religion. I think that's a I think that's a mm-hmm. big one. Mm-hmm. Number 24, what to wear. Number 23, dominance. Number 22, who's in control? Number 21, How do you bring up dominance? You, you know, don't, you I'd don't, like to talk, uh, Mary Lou, I'd like to talk to you about dominance in our relationship. And It doesn't come up that way. It comes up like this. Well, I'm, I've made the decision that we are going to uh, Vegas for vacation. Oh, what, what do you mean you made the decision? I thought we had not decided. Well, I'm when we can't make a decision, I make the decision. Yeah, if you've got a decider husband. and you're not, if you're not really, some people are down with that. They want, yeah, they want some, some sort of leadership in a relationship, and if that works, fine. But boy, if you don't dig it and you've got a decider, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you're listening to the best of Bob and Sherry. Absolutely. Get the free Bob and Sherry app and instantly get the podcast, the oddcast, and Bob and Sherry fun size. Sherry has found 30 things that can cause problems in a relationship. And uh, I think we're only up to like number 25. These are the 30 things that every couple argues about. Now, some couples argue more than others about one or two, but this is what we all argue about. Uh, We're at number 21. Who's the boss? Number 20, the in-laws. Number 19, telling private information about the relationship to other people. That's bad. You got to be really careful about that. Yeah. Number 18, sexual acts, followed by number 17, how frequently we're performing those. I think that's a big thing. I think it's a real big thing. You know, go back to the one about telling secrets. Mm -hmm. If you've, let's say it's the woman and there's something that's very personal and private between the husband and the wife, but she has a very close sister or girlfriend. I still think the likelihood that the sister or the girlfriend, even though she's promised to shut up, blabs to their boyfriend or husband. Yep. And as soon as that happens, you know, it's it's out there. You always have to know, too, that when you're telling a secret that it's very unlikely that that person won't tell their partner. That's spouse. that's what I just said. Yeah. Even if it's not about you. So if it's a secret that needs to stay a secret, you really can't tell anybody. That's true. You just can't. That, that's, that's very, very true. Now, I will say that I probably have told you some things that I haven't told anybody else. And they've never gone anywhere. No, they never have. They never have. But that's how much I trust you. I will keep, if someone tells me this is a secret, I will keep it Mm -hmm. and I will keep, I will keep it alone because it's not a secret. If I tell you and you tell your wife and then she's like telling her best friend or slips up after a couple of drinks, swears her best friend to secrecy, but then the best friend tells her husband. And now my secret is in the hands of at least four or five other people. Yep. And that's just the reality of life. Okay. We are at. Sex is a lot. Sexual acts, frequency of, one wants it, the other doesn't. We're at number 15, sharing responsibilities. Yeah, that's a big one, too. Number 14, not showing up when and where you're supposed to. Number 13, who does more work? Number 12, chores. Number 11, housekeeping. Number 10, now we're at the top 10 things we fight about. And isn't it interesting that um, telling that's, secrets and sex isn't, isn't in the is top not 10. in there. I, that surprises me. These are the top 10 things we fight about. Number 10, whose friends we hang out with more. Number nine, past relationships. Number eight, being possessive. Number seven, talking to the ex. Number six, jealousy. Number five, our feelings. Number four, not feeling appreciated. Number three, one, not paying enough attention to the other. And your top two arguments are lack of communication and the number one argument that we have, um, one person feels they are not shown enough love or affection. Yeah, that makes sense. 
That makes sense. I'm surprised sex is not in the top ten. Not there's in a the couple, top ten. There's a couple up there that uh, seem superfluous. And the kids top 10. aren't in the top ten either. Yeah, yeah. It's. But you know, there. If the number one thing that we fight about is you don't show me enough love or affection, or I don't show you enough love or affection, that would seem like an easy thing to fix. Yeah. But what if you don't show it because you no longer feel it? Mm. Now that's harder to fix. <laughs> You're listening to the best of Bob and Sherry. Absolutely. A shareable taste of the show. The Fun Size Podcast drops every Thursday on the free Bob and Sherry app. I am such a time wasting weirdo. <laughs> when you. You know, I really am. Hey, hey, you don't need to explain. Are is anyone putting up a fight in here? I I am a time. I thought about that the other day. That you're I said, a time wasting. weirdo? You know weirdo? what? You are a time wasting weirdo. If you if you took the time that you waste doing things that you'll never be a part of, or thinking about things that you cannot do, and took that time to. Figure out a way to make more money or figure out like uh, an invention. Or to do the things you can do. Or do the things you can do. You'd be so much better off. And I'll give you an example. I love to go to Lowe's. I do. I like walking around it. What is it Lowe's for you? You know, not much because (laughs) I can't fix a damn thing, but... And you don't build stuff. I don't don't know how to build anything. I can't... can't, uh, if if you gave me like a jigsaw, I would not know what to do with it. I just I just figure if I walk around those aisles long enough, somehow it's going to seep in and I'll be able to figure something out. And once in a while, like I'll say, oh, well, there's a thing I could figure out. You you can uh, roll up your garden hose with this thing. I should get that because I'm leaving it out all over the place. Right. I love this thing and I'll buy that. Right. But the thing where I really waste time, it's not so much walking around, you know, the different departments and lows. Sometimes I actually do learn something about fertilizer for the flowers or something. Every time I go and I look around and make sure that there's no one that I know, like my wife looking at me, I always stop at the, you know, the magazine section they have at Lowe's, you know those? I always stop and look at the How to Build Your Own Log Cabin magazine. You have won at this since the day I met you. And I and I stand there and I go through it and I say, well, I don't like that one at all. That one is, I don't like those windows. Oh, that's a nice one. That's the one that I would have. That one right there. Look at that. Look at, look at the view I could be enjoying. And I'm going through it and I'm this close to buying a hard copy for like $25 cabins of America. And I'm thinking, you don't know how, you you have to call Kevin, you know, when the, the washer or dryer are oh, bouncing he's, around. He's going to come fix your weather stripping on the door. Oh, okay. Great. So that's covered. Yeah. Like, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. And yet, here I am, you know, um, Bob of the great outdoors looking at a cabin that I would, but I would like to have. But just because you can't do a small thing doesn't mean that you can't do a big thing. For example, I cannot cross-stitch my initials on a piece of fabric, but I wrote a book. Yeah. So maybe you can't fix the weather stripping on your front door, but you could build a cabin. I could not build maybe a cabin. Maybe you could. I could maybe not Maybe you build. could. Now, the attention span piece of it, I get a little worried because you can't build a cabin in an afternoon. You're going to have to have sustained cabin building commitment for a long time. Cabin fever. I was just going to say. Yeah. I'd have to have cabin fever of of another sort. You know what? Your property, your yard, is so heavily wooded and you have deer. It's so pretty. What if, this is just a thought, what if we built you a tiny log cabin? Well, that's an idea. And you could go out in it with a glass of wine and sit in the tiny cabin and watch the deer. And I am not, if you think I'm making fun of you, you're wrong. I'm not talking about why one of were those. You, why were you laughing then would be my question. Because <laughs> I know you're thinking that I'm talking about one of those plastic Fisher Price cabins. No, I'm saying Kevin builds you a real, like a tiny house, a miniature log cabin that's big enough just for you. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. And then my uh, stepdaughter could talk about me. What is your stepfather like? He's the guy on the radio, right? Yeah, he is. He has a tiny log cabin, and he goes there 
in the early evening hours and drinks wine alone <laughs> looking at the deer. You know, when you say it like that, it doesn't even sound that dysfunctional. It sounds almost meditative. It's not, it could be your meditation cabin. Uh, yeah. There you go. And maybe you build it. So there's room, like, not for a couch, but, like, for a love seat. And you and Mary, as the kids get older and they're louder and they have friends over and they want to have parties and stuff, you and Mary could go to the cabin. I, I am tired of being driven from homes. I'm just... <laughs> Why am I? Why am I always being driven from my home? It's, no, that's it's, not it's, the right way to look at it. <laughs> but it, that's what the bottom line is. The kid's taking over the house. If there's a wife that's not driving me out. No, it's a kid. I'm sorry. You're right. This is not the first time we've tried to build a tiny house for you that's in right. the backyard. I'm always being driven from my home, and I always pay for the homes. It's not right. This is why I guess I'm just better off just wasting time at Lowe's. But you have to admit, it's not a bad thing to think about. Yeah. In that back natural area nestled yeah. in the trees. I would like to build it myself. But Maybe as a little soon as fire that, pit outside? Yeah. Yeah. But as soon as that buzz saw started and I, I start to move the buzz saw into the wood, all I'm going to be thinking about, <laughs> you, you could lose a finger just like that. All of us at the Bob and Sherry Show would like to thank you. Thanks for helping us in this crazy past year as we recognize together healthcare heroes, essential workers, first responders, and thanks for your help finding those who have struggled in the pandemic with the Fill the Fridge promotion. Mostly, we'd like to thank you for sticking with us during this time and look forward with you to brighter times on the horizon. From the Bob and Sherry Show. Get Bob and Sherry swag in our store at BobandSherry.com. Okay, so when a woman looks at a guy, something naturally turns her on that the guy's face has. What do you think that is? They took a look at photos of men's faces. Strong hundreds chin. Hundreds of them. And, um, and, and women were attracted, by and large, to men with dominant what? Chins, foreheads. I would say chin. red tint to their face. Get out of here! I would tint. not have guessed that. When the man's face was too red, though, it made him look aggressive, like he was in a fight. Women did not like that at all. I was the only exception. Almost all of the women, when they when they could, would choose a guy instead of a guy who had just like a white face a or pale face. yeah, pale yeah. face. And of course, we're talking about white people here. Uh, but if a guy had a uh, had a reddish complexion, like um, well, Bill Clinton, I guess. That's appealing. That's appealing to women for some reason. A little Why? Bit of because redness, it shows redness in the face. Or what? Um, I actually have that a little bit. Yeah. Well, if I you mean... look at if you look at a photograph of me next to my wife, she looks like Casper the Friendly Ghost. Chick bait. I mean, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the legend. You know, sometimes I think yeah. you hand pick these stories just to. Uh, <laughs> I have that. Uh, hey. I have another story here. This one from the Chive dot com. The sexiest men were raised in Old Lyme, Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Turns out, if a man was raised in Old Lyme, he's got it going. He's got yeah, it going on. Right, right. Top no, five. I, I... Top five signs of a desirable man. Number five: <laughs> medium stature. <laughs> Number four, tousled hair. <laughs> Number three, a predilection for shellfish. <laughs> Number two, firm and decided opinions on what constitutes a good restaurant experience. <laughs> Look at this, Sherry. Can you, anybody want to guess what the number one marker is for a desirable man? Anyone? Virgo astrological <laughs> sign. <laughs> yeah, Virgo, there it is. I do. I think there's you nothing, stack the no, deck. No, no, and I'll tell you why. There's good. nothing in it for me. I'm, I'm taken. Right? There's nothing in it for me. I got the girl. Just taunting. Oh, yeah. you're just taunting. Just taunting. Yeah. Tomorrow on the show, it's the top five leisure activities of truly desirable men. Number five: watching the cat eat. <laughs> Number three, searching endlessly for exactly the right towel rack for the spare bathroom. <laughs> Stop.
Stop. Stop. Don't miss it. Find out if you have the characteristics of the most widely desirable men tomorrow on the show. It's just by chance. That's all. <laughs> the best of Bob and Sherry. Absolutely. Hey, thank you so much for listening to the Bob and Sherry podcast and the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. We would love if you would subscribe, rate and review, and share it with a friend on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you go. And thank you again for listening.